Welcome to the Money Rules Podcast, where we tackle your personal financial matters with leading financial advisors. Your host, we do Melon Zorko. As retirement approaches, many investors are faced with a myriad of decisions that can be daunting to navigate, from determining the right income stream to ensuring tax efficiency and long-term sustainability. The choices can feel overwhelming. One popular option that emerges in this landscape is the living annuity. To shed light on what living annuities are and how they work, we have with us today Devin Card, who is a certified financial planner at Crew Invest. Welcome, Devin. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Hi, Tumi. Thanks for having me. Always good to be here. Devin, let's kick off things by demystifying the concept of living annuities. Can you explain to our listeners what exactly they are and how it differs from other retirement products? Sure, of course. So in a very simple way, in the retirement space, when you're saving and building for retirement, um, investors would use your your typical structures like a retirement annuity, a pension fund or a provident fund, which are obviously um, group schemes through an employer, where you'd save on a regular basis as you lead up towards your retirement. And then when it's time to retire and now reap the rewards of your savings. Living annuity is one of the options that investors have uh, when they retire from these these structures and basically turn off the savings tap and now turn on the tap where they now receive their pension in retirement. Could you walk us through the income options available within a living annuity and how one goes about selecting the appropriate level of income? Of course. So a living annuity, um, you have the option of drawing anywhere between 2.5% and 17.5% of, of your fund value on an annual basis when you when you have your, your options of your, your drawdown level. And investors can choose whether they want to receive this payout as an annual upfront amount. They can choose quarterly, biannually or monthly. And when it comes to determining, you know, which option to take, it, it's important to, you know, sit down with your financial advisor and look at your plan holistically, because depending on your needs and your cash flow needs, more importantly, this is really what's going to determine whether you need these funds to land in your account on a more regular basis, like monthly, or it could be a situation where you have other investments or other living annuities as well, where you might want to choose various options where one pays out on an annual basis to cover any ad hoc expenses and and you might choose a monthly one for your, your regular monthly expense needs. Now, one concern that often arises is the risk involved with these annuities, particularly regarding the sustainability of income over the long term. Could you elaborate on the risks associated with these investments? Sure. So, so the, I would say there's probably two types of risks that investors need to be concerned about when it comes to to living annuities. So, to answer the the first question around the the sustainability, that's always to do with your your drawdown rate. So, how much are you drawing out, and what return you're actually getting, you know, from the underlying investment. You know, so the theory behind it, you know, obviously inflation is uh, some, a retiree's biggest uh, concern when they retire. So, if you you can imagine if you're drawing out at a rate that's greater than inflation. Basically, what's going to happen is uh, you're eventually going to have to keep increasing that that percentage that you draw out on an annual basis. And if you continue to do so, you'll eventually hit the cap of 17.5%. And you're going to be limited in terms of how much you can draw down. And as your expense needs go up on an annual basis, you're going to be forced to keep drawing 17.5%, which if the fund itself isn't returning more than that, you're going to eventually start depleting your capital and run into what we call like a liquidity concern. So that kind of ties into the other risk, and that's actually the investment risk of the the portfolio that you choose in the living annuity. So the nice thing about living annuities is you're not restricted by regulation 28, like investors are when they're saving in a retirement annuity, for an example. So you can invest in any range of um, assets starting from you know, a, a basic income fund or money market fund, all the way up to a hundred percent equity fund, for example, you know, invested a hundred percent offshore. But obviously, those two different types of investments are very different risk profiles. So it's important for investors to understand one what return they actually need from their overall portfolio to have a sustainable drawdown in retirement. But then also 
what risk they're actually willing to to take on as in we call it uh, your risk appetite when it comes to investing because you know someone who's now retired that's all you have that's your nest egg you know so someone might not want to take too much risk in their portfolio considering that that's all that they have so it's it's all decisions that all tie into each other that take careful consideration and something we always advise is engage with your financial advisor have a look at your holistic retirement plan and portfolio because it might not be a decision that you take in isolation just for your living annuity but you know you need to consider all your other assets and income streams um, when making these types of decisions Devin, let's talk about taxation. How are living annuities taxed both in terms of income and growth within the investment? Yeah, that's another great, great question. So if I look at the the tax inside living annuities, so one of the, the big benefits of, of living annuities is that they're actually tax free um, in terms of any growth that you earn inside the investment itself and any interest that you earn inside the investment. So you, you don't have to worry about paying capital gains tax or worrying about any additional tax for the interest that you earn inside the living annuity. But something that's very important to, to remember is that the drawdown from the living annuity is seen as taxable income. And you will need to pay income tax on that drawdown. And Something that investors often forget, and it's very important to take into consideration, is that most of the time, the service providers only know your drawdown from your living annuity. So they're going to tax you as though that's your only source of income. And more often than not, retirees will will have multiple sources of income whether it's either a rental property or maybe uh, you know another annuity at a different platform or potentially a life annuity maybe they're even you know carrying on with some sort of consultation work and earning other income and it could be a situation where the tax that you're paying on the living annuity drawdown that the service provider is withholding could be understated and you always just need to take into consideration that you might need to top up your your income tax payable at the end of the tax year when you you consider your your total income um, from your your portfolio. So what happens to the funds within a living annuity upon the investor's death? And are there any options available for beneficiaries? So living annuities are are actually a great estate planning tool as well, because Living annuities actually sit outside of the investor's estate, provided you have beneficiaries nominated. So again, crucially important that you, if you have a living annuity, please make sure that you've nominated a beneficiary. And service providers even allow you to nominate secondary beneficiary. And basically what this is, is in the event of your primary beneficiary potentially predeceasing you, In case you forget to nominate a new beneficiary, you've actually already got that secondary beneficiary loaded. So if you've loaded a beneficiary, it actually sits outside of your estate and it doesn't need to be wound up through your estate. And we all know that winding up estates can can take some time. Um, And unlike retirement annuities, it's not a case of having trustees that do due diligence and determine if you have other financial dependents that they need to release some funds to. Very simply, if you have a beneficiary nominated, that's the person that's going to um, inherit the living annuity. And in terms of the, the taxes for the, the the beneficiary and the options available to them, so very simply, you have two options. One, the, the beneficiary can either take the, the living annuity as a, a cash lump sum there are taxes applicable to this this cash lump sum, or they can take it as a living annuity themselves. You also afforded the opportunity to do a combination of of each of those. You can take some cash and some living annuity. And this is where the beneficiaries just need to make sure that they they take their own um, financial planning points into consideration when making these decisions, because each one will, will have its own implications, whether it's either the tax on the lump sum or you know, the the living annuity that will now attract a potential income tax in their own name uh, once they take it over as a living annuity. Devin, just lastly, if I'm unsure if a living annuity is the appropriate vehicle for me, how can I go about determining this? So uh, I'm sure you've heard us uh, beat this drum before, but if you're unsure, it, it's always important to engage with um, a certified financial planner um, because it's it's not a, de- a decision to be taken in, in isolation. Um, there's so many other considerations that, that one should think of when determining whether it's a living annuity or, or a life annuity um, or any other option that that, that you, you can take. 
um, you got to look at your holistic portfolio. You know, what else do you have? What other assets are available? Because your financial plan is going to help you make the best decision based on your holistic portfolio, not just looking at, at one specific investment. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode, Devin. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. That was Devin Card, who is a certified financial planner at Crew Invest. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Money Rules Podcast. To listen to more, go to moneyweb.co.za or the MoneyWeb app and follow MoneyWeb News for daily updates. MoneyWeb, your trusted source for business and investment insights.